It's election time again on these YouTube streets. Make sure you vote for St. Laz for your YouTube streets spokesperson. And make sure you don't vote for no bozo goofball derelicts that's out there on YouTube. They got their hands on a free phone with no connection, just Wi-Fi and somebody's spot. You heard? Eating dollar store, family dollar frozen foods and stuff like that. You heard? Don't vote for those guys. Vote for LAZ. If you happen to see a former storyteller from off the channel named John Rada, now being a major St. Laz hater on YouTube, and it confuses you, let me explain it to you. John Rada is your typical ghetto friend. When you do something good, he'll smile up in your face and pretend to support you. But secretly, he's competing with you, he's jealous, and he kind of wishes it was him in the position that you're in. Pause. Basically, John Ryder started trying to tell me how to run my channel and how to do my job as if he know how to do my job better than me. So I quickly clipped his wings and cut them out like a cancer and tossed them with the other dogs and mongrels. John Ryder wanted to come back to the channel and tell more stories, but it was too late. He ran his mouth too much, he said too many hater type of things, and I was done with him. Now that he knows that his chances of getting back on his channel is zilch, he decided to become the newest St. Laz hater. But all jokes aside, John Ryder is suffering from a drug addiction and a mental health condition. He's a paranoid schizophrenic that believes that everybody is against him, his enemy, it's a real condition, and the brother needs mental health help and he needs medication. And I'm not just saying that to be funny. I'm dead ass. The brother is mentally deteriorating. So if you're believing anything this crazy person is saying about St. Laz on YouTube, you just might be crazy. When too. I bent down to go get the blunt, that's when the barrage of fire just was like, blah, 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 blah. So blah, 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 I'm ducking, blah, 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 blah. All I hear is, shoom, 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 shoom. In 1992 in Brownsville, Brooklyn, I was wrongfully charged with murder in the second degree for an accidental shooting that happened in Howard Projects. I got a documentary called Kids With Guns coming soon about my life experiences. And I swear, every single time I try to film this documentary, something happens that sets me back with it. This time, I bought a thousand dollar laptop computer to be able to edit and film this video in ultra, and film this documentary in Ultra HD. And that laptop was stolen. So now I don't got a laptop to even edit this project because the files are too big. So I swear to you, it's like the universe be trying to stop me from making this project until it's the correct time for that project to be done. I don't know what it is, but shout out to the bro FO, we working. But in 1992, when I was charged with this crime, I was sent to Rikers Island. In 1993, my mother moved to Dykeman Projects because she was getting death threats in my old projects because of what had happened in my case. Now, at this time, Dykeman was a completely different place than what it is now. Now, you know, Dykeman is world famous. The basketball games, the clubs, the restaurants, the lounges. It's a place that everybody in New York City knows about and hangs out and all of that. You heard, but back in 1993, when my mother first moved up here, a lot of people in the city didn't even know what Dykeman was or where it was, and people thought it was the Bronx and all of that. You heard, it was extremely desolate out here, and the nickname for this project was called Ghost Town. You heard, because not just the projects, the whole Dykeman was kind of desolate. All of them stores and restaurants and lounges and stuff like that you see in Dykeman now, none of that existed. None of it existed. It wasn't nothing really going on exciting in Dykeman unless it was crime. 
You understand what I'm saying? All of that Times Square shit that's going on now, none of that existed. So, um, I was on Rikers Island in 92. And in 93, the judge finally showed me some mercy and dropped my bail down to something that my family could afford to bail me out for. So I got bailed out. I would have to turn myself back in and go up north and do six years soon. But in the meantime, in between time, I got to come home on bail for six months in 1993. And when I came home for that six months, I landed in Dykeman Projects where my mother was now staying. You heard? And like I said, it was a total different world from what it is now. And it was a total different world from Brownsville. It was things going on and happening that I was too young to understand and know about in Dykeman at that time. But as far as uh, crime and shootings and killings compared to where I grew up in Brownsville, it was nothing like that. And, you know, I was happy to be living somewhere where I ain't got to duck no, no, no bullets. You heard? But I did miss Brownsville and I did start bringing that Brownsville element up here. And I started inviting a bunch of my friends from Howard Project to come up to Dykeman and spend some time with me and get to know the neighborhood. You heard? So we started, so we started appreciating Dykeman and liking Dykeman and having fun in Dykeman. You heard? Met a lot of good dudes in Dykeman and made a lot of friends in Dykeman. You heard? So, you know, I was a teenager. I was 16 years old and I was exploring a new neighborhood. Now, now this part of Dykeman right here is right across the street from the projects and it's called The Drive. Now, in the last 10 years or so, The Drive has become a very famous place in New York City. This is where everybody goes in the summertime to have cookouts and parties and all type of stuff. And it'd be a movie back here every single summer. If you're not familiar with this drive, ask around, ask some friends and family, and they'll tell you about it. This little slither of grass that goes down all the way down the Harlem River Drive is where hundreds of people, blacks and Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and Mexicans, they all come back here and get their party on and they cook out on in the summertime. And once again, it's called The Drive. Now, back in the days in 1993, The Drive was nothing like it is now. The Drive was a place that only people from Dykeman Projects knew about and only people from Dykeman Projects would really come to. And dudes really just came here to smoke in peace and to get up with a girl. Cause you could come back here with a girl, smoke and have complete privacy if you know what I mean. But that's what the drive was known for. So if you seen somebody sliding off with a chick to the drive, you already know. You feel what I'm saying? And we used to come back here to smoke. And sometimes we was with chicks and we wasn't doing nothing sexual. We was just coming back here to smoke in peace because weed wasn't legal back then. You could go to jail for smoking weed outside. So one day we come to the drive, right? It was like me. You know, I'm trying to remember who was there, but it was probably like me. I think Joaquin, rest in peace. Um, uh, maybe my bro, Rob. You heard? Shout out to my bro, Rob, from the Bronx. My nigga, Trub, from Howard Projects. You heard? My son, Israel, brother. You heard? And maybe Gotti, Paulie from Dykeman. I can't remember exactly who was there, but it was the usual band of motherfuckers that we used to be smoking and chilling and hanging out with back in them days, right? So we come back here 
and we walk all the way back to where River Park Towers can be seen. It's all type of boat houses and kayaking teams and all of that that got stations out here and all of that. It was none of this in 1993. It was pretty desolate and you know, it was, it was a dangerous place to be playing around where the water was at. A lot of this stuff has been redesigned like this little hump right here where the trees is at. If I can recall correctly, I don't even think this hump was here. I know that little uh, brick house thing, I know that wasn't there. You feel what I'm saying? It was designed a little differently because now it's considered like a park. You feel me? But back then, it was just a stretch of land that wasn't being occupied. You heard? Boom. So like I said, right across the river is RPT, River Park Towers. You heard one of the most notorious housing developed one of the most notorious housing developments in New York City. You heard? Right across the river is RPT. So boom, we over here somewhere under these trees. Now it's the summertime, so all of these trees are filled with leaves. You heard? All of these trees are nice and green and filled with leaves. And we over here, standing under these trees, smoking weed. And across from, the, across from us on the river, it's like they pool and they little park for River Park Towers where they hang out at, where it's like the only place to hang out at in River Park Towers. And it's a bunch of kids, teenagers, over there hanging out probably smoking weed doing the same thing we was doing you heard except for we had broads with us we had a bunch of chicks with us too or a few chicks with us too rest in peace nora you heard nora later on in life committed suicide you heard and it was a tragic thing in dykeman rest in peace nora she might have been there this day too so we right here under these trees smoking so we under these trees smoking, Now I mean? You know, we young teenagers, you know, we teenagers thinking we grown, you heard? And we acting tough too, real talk, because if I'm not mistaken, we had the ratchet on us too. At this time, we had a little 2-5. My bro Rob had a little 2-5 and he had bought it to Dykeman and we was open like, yo, let us hold that son, let us hold that. You feel me? So son used to let us hold a 2-5 for a few days and we'd be out here running around with the little 2-5 raving and you know, we thought we was we thought we was dumb niggas. So, son, it's my word. This particular day, we standing around, we smoking. Now our body movement is all tough. We walking around, you know what I mean? We bopping, we, you know what I mean? We trying to impress the chicks. We talking tough shit. Yeah, son, cause you know back in Brooklyn, nigga, we would have been doing it like this, son. You already know. We just running around with mad, reckless teenage energy. You heard? Passing the blunts back and forth to each other. Yo, here, son, hit this, son, hold on. Hold on, son, let me hit that right quick. Let me hit that. You heard? We just reckless, my bro. So. I done smoke so much weed at this time. I'm super, I'm super high. I'm super high and out of my mind from smoking so much weed. I smoked too much that day. I could recall feeling myself saying, damn, and I smoked a little bit too much. Cause we was, cause work, cause we was passing like two, three blunts around at one time, right? So I'm standing under the tree and I'm trying to light a blunt with another blunt that's going out. You know how you hold a little roach to the other joint and you light it? I'm like this. I'm trying to light one blunt from the other blunt that's about to go out. All of a sudden, I just see leaves falling down in front of my face. So I'm like, yo, what's that, man? It's a squirrel up in the tree or something? That shit like this. leaves i'm looking around i'm like i don't see no squirrel my mans and them start looking up word what is that 
leaves just keep falling, bro. Next thing you know, something just tells me, look across the river. I look across the river, and those bunch of teenagers that was over there, they all standing up staring at us. And I'm like, why is them niggas standing there staring at us like that? And I'm looking, I just start seeing a flash from a gun. Bop, 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 bop. I'm like, my stupid ass, I'm so high. I'm like, what is that? What's that crackling sound coming from over there? Niggas like this, blah, blah. And as I'm looking, more and more leaves is just falling. I look back, I see the leaves falling. Next thing you know, I just hear a bullet whiz past my ear. I'm like, yo, what the fuck was that? Another one. I said, oh shit. Then it dawned on me. These niggas from River Park Towers is blaming at us from across the river. I said, yo, they shooting. Oh shit, they shooting. Niggas started running. Everybody started running. When niggas started running, them niggas opened fire crazy. We like this, yo, they shooting, they shooting niggas like this. We ducking. My nigga, this is word to everything I love. So many bullets was whizzing past my so many bullets was whizzing past my ears. And them shits was coming so close to my head. That's all I kept hearing. This is first of all. When they really started opening fire, when I really noticed that, I forgot to mention. I'm so stupid. When it, when I started running, I dropped. I had the big blunt that I lit, and I dropped the small roach on the ground. And I was so high when I dropped the we we was kind of laughing too, like we teenagers. So we was oh shit, yo they shooting. Yeah, I, I dropped the small blunt, like a high idiot. I, my instincts made me stop and reach back for the blunt because I thought it was the big blunt that I dropped. Nigga, I should have kept running no matter which blunt it was. But like a high idiot teen, I went back to go get the blunt. And when I, when I bent down to go get the blunt, that's when the barrage of fire just was like, blah, 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 blah. So now I said, fuck the blunt. Even though it was a small roach anyway, I realized that. I'm like, what am I doing? While a barrage of fire, I'm like, blah, 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 I'm ducking, blah, 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 blah. All I hear is, shoom, 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 shoom. Word to everything I love, this is word to everything I love. It was so many bullets whizzing past my head that I gave up and said, this is the day that I die. I said, damn, I, I'm out on bail. I never got to prove my innocence in my case. All of that shit was going through my head. And I just gave up for two seconds. I said, I, I can't take this level of wondering if the bullet is going to hit me or not. Because they was whizzing past my face and my head so much. I thought it was only a matter of seconds before one of these shits hit me in the face and the head. So I gave up for a second. I was like, fuck it, man, hit me. You heard? And then two seconds went by, shoo, 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 and I still ain't get hit, and I snapped out of that shit, and I started running again. My niggas was already running up. I'm like, yo, yo, the niggas, bah, 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 bah. Man, listen, we hightailed that shit back to Dykeman Projects, my nigga. And from then on, I was on point fucking with that drive shit, my nigga. I'm not sitting directly across from River Park Towers. To this day, even filming this shit, I'm not gonna be standing directly across from River Park Towers for too long, my nigga. Cause they was airing at our asses. And it was only a matter of time for one of them bullets hit somebody in the head. And by the grace of the universe, nobody got shot, bro. You heard? But I just remember saying, damn. All these years I spent in Brownsville and I ain't never come that close to death. You heard? But I came uptown to Dykeman and missed death by this much. You heard? And it was crazy. And that was my story about the drive in Dykeman, a famous place that this summer is going to be packed. You heard?
And that's a whole fact.